David Cameron, by my calculation, the 12th Prime Minister of Queen Elizabeth's reign. That was on the day that she became Britain's longest-serving monarch. Almost seven years to that day, news came that she had died at the age of 96. So we are bringing you continuing coverage of that here on the BBC World Service. That was me, James Kamara Sami and Razia Iqbal. With bbc.com slash news, you get the latest news stories anytime you like. Whether you're interested in science, health, technology or business, the bbc.com slash news website can offer it all. It also gives you the opportunity to listen live to our news output or check the latest breaking news with our minute-by-minute -minute news feed. All this content, coverage and opportunity makes the BBC the world leader in news coverage online. bbc.com slash news. This is the BBC World Service, and on our website you can explore more of our programmes, from documentaries to science. Listen and download at any time by going to bbcworldservice.com. On air, online and on smartphones, this is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. You're listening to the BBC World Service. This is BBC News with continuing and extended coverage to mark the death of Her Majesty the Queen with Razia Iqbal and James Kumarasamy. Earlier today, Buckingham Palace announced that Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch, had died peacefully at her Scottish home of Balmoral. She was 96. Charles, the Queen's eldest son, said the death of his beloved mother was a moment of the greatest sadness for him and all members of the royal family. He becomes King Charles III. Members of the public have been gathering in Scotland and outside Buckingham Palace. We will be with you for the next hour with coverage looking back at her long life, her reign, the end of the second Elizabethan era, the impact she made on both the United Kingdom but also on the Commonwealth of Nations. And, of course, we will be bringing you reaction to her death. World leaders, religious leaders, past and present, have been sharing their reflections. First, the news. Hello, I'm Roisin Hasty with the BBC News. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Queen Elizabeth. In a statement, the palace said she died peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, where she'd spent the summer. She was 96. Her four children were in attendance. Elizabeth ascended the throne in 1952. She became Britain's longest reigning monarch, surpassing Queen Victoria seven years ago. Our correspondent, James Cook, is at Balmoral. The sun, shrouded in clouds, set here on the Balmoral estate, setting too on the end of an era for the United Kingdom and for the world. And minutes after it did so, uh, a car swept through the gates, several cars in fact, one of them we believe containing Prince Harry to join his brother, Prince William, and his father, the King, in mourning for Queen Elizabeth. Charles, the new king, said the death of his beloved mother was a moment of greatest sadness for him and all members of the royal family. He said they mourned profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign whose loss would be deeply felt throughout the country, the Commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. On Friday, Charles will be officially named king. It's been confirmed he'll be known as Charles III. Britain's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, described the Queen as the spirit of the country. Speaking at Downing Street, she said the monarch had been the rock upon which modern Britain was built. Miss Truss was only appointed to the role two days ago by Queen Elizabeth. Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, said the Queen's death marked a profoundly sad moment. Scotland loved, respected and admired her. And by all accounts, Her Majesty was really happier than when she was here in Scotland at her beloved Balmoral. A fact I have been privileged to observe personally. I hope it will be a source of comfort to her family that she spent her final days in a place that she loved so much. International leaders have also paid their respects to Queen Elizabeth. President Biden said she was a stateswoman of unmatched dignity and constancy. At the United Nations, the Security Council held a minute silence for the Queen. The UN Secretary-General spokesperson, Stefan Duzeric, 
The Secretary General is deeply saddened at the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. As the United Kingdom's longest lived and longest reigning head of state, Queen Elizabeth II was widely admired for her grace, dignity, and dedication around the world. Pope Francis praised Queen Elizabeth's steadfast faith. He said he was offering his prayers for her eternal rest. World News from the BBC. The Queen took a particularly close interest in the Commonwealth, the voluntary associations of about 50 nations which emerged from the end of the British Empire. Its leaders have expressed their gratitude for her dedication and hard work. Gabriel Gatehouse looks now at her role on the world stage. When the Queen came to the throne in 1952, the Commonwealth was a fledgling organisation. It never became a major force on the world stage, but it did grow into a stable and diverse group of more than 50 members. The Queen was a titular head of state, but what she lacked in executive power, she made up for with an unrivaled front seat view of Britain's role in world events since 1950. Her first Prime Minister was Winston Churchill. She advised a dozen subsequent leaders on international crises from Suez to 9-11 and helped steer the country through periods of great change. In other news, the U.S. Justice Department has said it will appeal against a federal judge's decision to appoint an independent official to review records seized by the FBI from former President Donald Trump's Florida home. The judge, the official known as a special master, should be asked to look at the material seized. Mr. Trump is under investigation for retaining classified government documents. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has met the U.S. Secretary of State who is making an unannounced visit to Kiev. Mr. Blinken unveiled another $2.8 billion in military aid. Earlier, the Ukrainian military claimed a breakthrough in its counter-offensive against Russian troops. Villagers near Pakistan's largest freshwater lake, Manchar, are fleeing their homes as it's come dangerously close to bursting its banks. More than 1,300 people have now died in the country's worst floods. The disaster is estimated to have caused losses of about $10 billion. BBC News. You're listening to the BBC World Service with continuing and extended coverage on the death of Her Majesty the Queen, the James Kumrasamy. For the next hour, we will be bringing you coverage marking the death of Her Majesty. Queen Elizabeth was 96 years old. Buckingham Palace announced the death three and a half hours ago. She died peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, where she had spent the summer. Her four children, including the heir presumptive, who is, of course, now King Charles, were in attendance. Queen Elizabeth was not just the head of state and the monarch of the United Kingdom, but also the head of the Commonwealth of Nations, a political association of more than 50 countries, the vast majority of which are former territories of the British Empire. A statement from Buckingham Palace read, The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. And from the new King, King Charles, this statement. The death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much-loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms and the Commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. So joining us for this hour is Robert Lacey, historian and author of The Queen, A Life in Brief. Uh, welcome to the BBC World Service, Robert. And I wonder, because so many people have talked about uh, her service, how important that was, uh, and it does seem fitting that right to the end, just two days before her death, we saw her asking her 15th Prime Minister to form a new government. Uh, it's extraordinary. What, what day are we of the week? Are we now well, in England? We're we on well, Thursday. Well, it was no um, uh, of what was also interesting, I thought, was that um, the, the, the new Prime Minister and the old one retiring were all the high to Scotland to see her. But what I found fascinating was that as late as last week, she said, uh, I'll come down to London. Um, it, it, these busy men, women, whether well, she didn't know it, when the one's now a woman, shouldn't have to fly all this way up, um, spend a whole day traveling just because of me. She was going, at the age of 90, she 
was going to come.